Hey guys, it's uh, Luke Devsich here again with Patient Rush, and I have with me today Dr. Michael Frazes from Adelaide. Michael, thank you so much for coming on, mate. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me, Luke. Awesome. So to kick us off, um, could you give us a little bit of background on how you got into the industry? Yeah, so I've been in the industry for about seven, nearly eight years now. Yeah. Um, so got into dentistry straight out of high school. It was one of those things where, I know everyone says it, but I just sort of fell into it. It was just one of those things that I put on my application form. I think it was like fourth down the list or something like that. Yeah. I got into all my other things. I got into law. I got into you know, health sciences and all that other stuff. Um, but then I just never was happy with those options. And I just kept sort of going, oh, well, what happens if I get into the next one? What happens if I get into the next one? Yeah. And then randomly one day, um, someone pulled out of dentistry and they called me up and said, hey, we've got a spot available. Do you want to go in? I was like, sure, why not? Uh, and then here I am eight years later. That's awesome. It's cool, eh? How, how sometimes little little things or little, it seems little, but they end up being massive path changes. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. So, someone dropped out and then sort of I took their spot and the rest is history. I did, yeah. didn't look back. I think I was in law at the moment at that yeah. point and I just went, nah, let's just do dentistry. Nice. How long into your studies was that? Oh, I hadn't even started. Like I bought the textbooks and stuff and they called me up. I think it was like two days before I was due to start. And they said, Hey, do you want to just completely change everything? Yeah. I was like, sure. Why not? I bought some pencils. That's, that's all I'd prepared for really. <laughs> um, so yeah, I just had to make a last minute change. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Oh, cool. Awesome. And then moving forward, what, you know, over this last eight years or so, What's been a, a, a principle or a strategy that's worked really well for you as a doctor? Um, something that you can share that maybe you implement uh, in your life day to day as a, as a dentist? Well, something that I do, definitely do implement day to day would be just being as focused as you can in the task that you are doing at hand yeah. and also just persevering persevering as much as you can because a lot of the stuff that we sort of strive for in, in life or in dentistry, they don't come after, you know, a couple of days or a couple of weeks. They come after a couple of years of just trial and error and practice after practice after practice. Like people see like really nice crown preps or really nice impressions and really nice this, really nice that. Yeah. And they're like, oh, I really want to do that. And then they, they read all the textbooks, they do all the, the courses and then their first crown prep that they do is crap. Mm. And then they go, oh, well, I'm not very good at doing crown prep. It's like, if I look back at some of the stuff that I did eight years ago, it's, it's really bad. Mm. Um, my hand skills were definitely not what people would call amazing straight out of uni. Yeah, It's taken me this long to get to where I am now. And I'm still not 100% happy. There are still people far better than me that I'm like, oh, I just want to tweak this, this, and this, and try to get better at this, this, and this. It's, it's a never ending sort of pursuit of, of excellence and just trying to sort of strive to get there um, and having the focus so that you can just keep persevering in an appointment when something doesn't go, doesn't go to plan because things won't go to plan, but just to have that mental focus to be able to just go, okay, this didn't go to plan. I know why it didn't go to plan. If I tweak this, this, and this, I can go forward mm. and still end up with an okay result yeah. rather than just crumpling into a you know ball and sort of crying in the corner because your crown prep didn't go so well. Sure. Um, and being able to finish that appointment in a timely fashion yeah. when things don't go to well, because there's no point having the most amazing crown prep if it's taking three hours and the patient's dead in the chair. So yeah, exactly. I love that. That's awesome. So how do you, just digging into that a little bit, how do you cultivate that focus within yourself? Because that, that is a, a capacity and a skill, isn't it? Yeah, it's, look, it's like, this is going to go around about in circles, this, this analogy, but it focus and sort of your mental agility is, is like a muscle. So the more you train it, the bigger and the better it's going to get. So like with any other muscle, you sort of train it in the gym and I go to the gym. I go to the gym a lot more frequently, 
I used to go to the gym a lot more frequently before I had a kid. Uh, now it's a little bit uh, harder to get to the gym. Yeah. Um, but it's just the same sort of focus, just, you know, getting yourself out of bed, going to the gym, yeah. um, having that, that discipline to do that, to, to lift those heavy weights, to mm-hmm. push yourself when you're in pain. And that just retrains your brain to go, okay, I'm in an uncomfortable place. I just need to push through just that little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. And it, it doesn't matter if you go to the gym or if you're doing a bike ride or solving a puzzle or, or playing a video game or just doing something that just stretches your abilities just that little bit more, but something that you know that you can do. And then ever so often you just sort of push that boundary, just that little bit more, that little bit more, the little bit more. But you need to have that mindset of, and just keep telling yourself, I, I can do this. I just need to push a little bit more. Yeah. But not being afraid to, you know, fail. It's like, oh, I'll try that heavier weight or I'll try that, you know, taller mountain or that more difficult, you know, level on that game. Oh, I failed at that. That's okay. I'll come back and I'll, I'll use what I learned and I'll get better and just sort of doing that. And then yeah. you can transition those skills into dentistry because a lot of people go, oh, you know, that crown prep's too hard. I'm not going to do that. And then they don't attempt all the easier stuff leading up to it. Whereas if you say, you know, go to the gym or something else, um, because they're life skills that they already do and have, it's easier for them to train that muscle that way rather than yes. just get doing more complex crown preps. Yes, yes. Yeah, that's awesome. And that, that's advice that applies to, to anyone really, doesn't it? The more, the more you can, um, you know, reduce distraction and, and focus on whatever you've mm. done, the higher quality it's going to be. Mm. Exactly. Yeah. Nice. Cool. And mate, and so to date, how important has marketing um, marketing been for you as a dentist? And, and what kind of marketing do, do you guys do? Um, so it's yeah. been it's been hugely um, important marketing, both internal external marketing. Yeah. The I mean, I'm a I'm an associate, so I don't pay any sort of marketing bills myself. Yeah. Um, a lot of the stuff that the practice does um, has always been lot of external marketing i mean your sort of your google ads and facebook and yeah. all that kind of stuff um i don't know it where we are we kind of have to have the the sort of yellow pages directory kind of thing if you're not paying for the subscription of that they don't put you on the internet so it's yeah. just a weird business model very archaic but it has to be done um and a lot of the internal marketing um we do as well so we especially during the pandemic, we've kind of yeah. focused a bit more on the, the free marketing side of things just to sort of help with cash flow. But yeah. I do a lot of that marketing myself as well as an associate. So I don't rely on the practice doing that marketing because not only do I have you know, myself as an associate, but I've got my personal brand and, and me sure. doing the, the teaching and the education. So um, I do my own sort of Facebook ads for, for myself yeah. Um, there's a lot of, you know, discussing with patients about getting them to refer their friends and family into to see us. Um, we have like a program where, if you're a patient in the practice, and we give you like a like a patient loyalty card kind of thing, mm-hmm. you can give that to your friends and family, and it's it's like an in for those friends and family to then come yeah. in to the practice, and then they get like a complimentary examination because they knew your original patient. So it brings people in because we're quite busy and a lot of people go, Oh, well they they don't need any more patients because they're quite busy. Mm. Whereas this is a way in because it's like a refer a friend kind of situation and then just gets more people um, through, or at least gets our name, you know, out there as well. So a lot of the, the marketing I focus on is the unpaid marketing, but we do a lot of paid marketing and I do a little bit of paid marketing myself as well. Nice, nice, oh, fantastic. And what's um, what's your sort of vision uh, for yourself as a doctor? Um, are you looking to, um, you know, is it is it an ambition of yours to have a clinic one day, Michael? Or how how do you sort of see that playing out? Well, it's 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 not the end goal. Yeah, it's it's kind of the means to to an end. So I yep. think everyone's ultimate goal is obviously having a better work life balance. Yeah having people work for you that can sort of share the workload and can sort of assist with all that. And also having a a legacy to sort of grow and, you know, put your name somewhere. 
um, sure. is kind of the the end goal. Uh, a practice is definitely a means to, to get that end. Yes. So that's always been the you know part of the the goal to get there. Yeah. So yeah, I probably will. I probably will get there. Sounds very definite, but I will. I will get there. Um, it's just not the focus at the moment of yeah. you know buying a practice or starting a practice. Um, it's always something that is being in discussion. There's you know monthly, weekly, yearly things that go on behind the scenes to to move that goal forward. But yeah, yeah, nice, nice, awesome, mate. And what's a what's a current challenge that you're that you're sort of that you're going through at the moment? I mean, obviously, we all have them. Um, something that you know that if you could wave a magic wand to fix, you would. Um, I like asking this question because. You know, dentists watching it, they can relate, and, and everyone has different ways of approaching mm. issues in the in the field. It's it's a tricky one because at the moment I'm kind of focusing on the education side of, of dentistry and sort of creating content and increasing my brand, mm -hmm. my personal brand as a dentist for yep. teaching and all that kind of stuff. So I'm kind of like a little fish in a really, really, really big pond. And it's it's daunting and it's it's scary, especially when you're putting your work and your name out there, not only because you're saying, look, look at what I can do, but it's a whole different level when you you're trying to say to someone, look what I can do. You should come and learn from me yeah. because you, you put the bus so much higher for yourself. Mm. And it, it's the current challenge that I have is mentally living up to the expectation that I set myself because it's so far removed from the reality that other people have as an expectation for me. Yes. So I'll put it, I'll put a post up and then I'll be like, this is okay work. And I'm like, I can definitely do better. I can see all the flaws, but other people are like, no, 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 it's amazing. It's, it's all this. But then, if I focus too much on what other people think is amazing, then I'm not going to grow. But if I focus too much on all the negative things that will help me grow, then I kind of am stuck in this negative mindset. And I just sort of beat myself down about the fact that, you know, the shade was, you know, slightly off or the, the margin was slightly irregular and all these little things that, yeah. And it's just balancing that because obviously some days I'm going to do some bad work and I need to be able to, learn from that and improve yeah but i can't also focus it's just which way do i go on what particular day and okay it's yeah. just a balancing act and it's something that i am learning to work with because having that self-criticism is important but you don't want it to be all consuming and it's it's a fine balancing act and it's something yeah. that I'm struggling with at the moment. Well, not struggling, but working through at the moment. Yeah, yeah. No, that, thanks for sharing, mate. That's really interesting. I think everyone can relate to that. It's, um, it, like you say, it's a balance and it's how, it seems to me like through myself as well, like my work, it's, it comes down to like self-awareness and how you apply that. Like if you come down too hard on this side or that side and, and mm. managing the, the progression and whatever it is you're doing. Um, so, yeah, interesting. Nice, mate. And to wrap us up, Michael, is there any anything over and above what you've uh, shared with us today? You know, any advice that you would give to someone who's maybe just starting? You know, whether they're just coming out of uh, their studies or they you know, something you can share to someone who wants to get to the next level. Um, what what what's a piece of advice that comes to mind? So I'd probably say that everyone always has their struggles when they first start out, and they think. Well, you either think that you're absolutely horrible at what you do or you think you're amazing. You're still going to be worse at what you do when you start than one year later, six years later, 10 years yeah. later. That's just the nature of progression. So just know that you will get better and just sort of work through the challenges because we all have them. And then if you have a, a challenge, an individual challenge on a particular day with a particular person, just sort of, you know, breathe through it, work through that, reflect, learn from those mistakes and then sort of move forward. And it's not just learn from those mistakes and just keep repeating them, but just sort of go, okay, well, why didn't that work? If I tweak it this way, is it going to be better? 
And then you try that and then go, okay, that works. So then you implement that into your daily routine or your workflow or whatever it is so that you can just keep slowly improving. It's not, things don't happen in massive leaps. They tend to be just a very gradual progression because there's little small things that you do daily that's going to influence what you do in 10 years time. So you might as well just start when you first are out and then slowly improve from there. Nice. Awesome. That's great advice, mate. Appreciate it. I think it sort of goes along with the theme of our talk as well. It's um, uh, really good, mate. So if anyone wants to reach out to you, Michael, where's the best place for them to, to do that? So I've got my professional uh, Facebook page. So that's everyday dentistry with Dr. Michael Frazers. Yep. And I mean, if people send me a message there or sort of like and follow the page that will, you know, show them all my content and videos and all that kind of stuff. And they can send me a message if they have any specific questions or challenges with things. There are people that I mentor from around the world and yeah, yeah, help them get through any problems. Awesome. Great. Well, Well, thank you so much, Michael. Really appreciate your time, mate. Enjoyed the chat. Thanks for having me. Cheers.